Welcome to Film Language for Broad General Education, thinking about how we go about analysing and explain media techniques. Over the course of three lessons, we're going to be looking to develop your skills in analysing filmic techniques. And we're going to do that through using technical language like denotation and connotation to explain what the director and a range of people involved in the film have done in order to make the film and give us a deeper understanding. And these include the shot, distance, angle and movement, the mise-en-scene, so what's in the scene, the editing to show how the film is pieced together, and the sounds, diegetic and non-diegetic, and how these are used to add extra emotion within a scene. So first up, denotation and connotation. We use these terms in media in order to explain what's happening and describe what's happening within a scene. So first up, the denotation is a description of what we are seeing or hearing on screen. And we have to mention some kind of technical aspect used in film in order to do so. We'll go into that in just a second. Next is connotation. You might have heard that word before when thinking about word choice in English. And it's the secondary meaning that we associate with something that we're seeing or hearing on screen. Now that's also based on what we have seen and heard before, and we bring that to our understanding and explanation of connotations. In this shot from Pulp Fiction by Quentin Tarantino, in order to describe one key thing and then explain its connotations, we could pick out the use of the prop, the gun. So for the denotation, we just need a description of what we're seeing or hearing. For the denotation here, it would be one of the characters is holding a gun and reloading it. So for the connotation, we then need to explain what that tells us in terms of the audience of what's happening. So the connotation of the prop of the gun being used is to indicate that the character is violent and that violence or death is going to occur later on. Because we know that when we see a gun in a film, this is usually what follows. Now here, what I've done is I've made this spider diagram showing how all the different aspects of film build up under this term filmic language. In English, we use the term language features and we've got imagery, sounds, tone, etc. But here, we're not interested really about the dialogue. We're focusing on what the director has done in order to create that sequence or film. So we're going to be going through camera angles and distance, camera movements, music and sound, mise en scene and editing. And you'll see that of each one of those branches on the spider diagram, there are lots of key technical terms there. And we're going to be going through them to explain what they are and how we go about analyzing their connotations. So to start with, camera distance. Now this is how far away the director places the camera from the character. If the character is far away and they're wanting to focus on the setting, then you're not gonna see much detail of the character. However, the closer we move the camera to the character, you're gonna see more expression and feelings on that character, but less of the landscape. And this leads us to the first camera distance we're gonna look at, the extreme long shot. Here, the focus is on the location and then the character is secondary within it. We're mainly seeing what's around the character. You'll see they appear small on the screen here, and this clip from Mission Impossible. The character, uh, played by Tom Cruise, is climbing up the outside of the world's tallest building, the Burj Khalifa. Now, in order to show how high up he is, we have the extreme long shot. Now, in film, most times that we look at a shot, there will be some form of movement in it as well. We're going to look at that later on. But here, don't worry too much about the movement. We have an extreme long shot from the start of the clip to the end of the clip. But I would like you to think, why has the director chosen an extreme long shot? So the extreme long shot, what does it allow us to see? We can see the buildings far, far below and then the beaches of Dubai. If we look at the character now where they are on the shot, they appear tiny on the screen. So the connotations of this is that the character is feeling trapped and isolated. It would be a terrifying place to be and that really is Tom Cruise climbing up the side of the building. 
okay, he was harnessed in, and that's removed later on in um, post-production, but that would still be terrifying. So we, as an audience, get this sense of vertigo and fear that the character themselves would be feeling. But you'll notice, at this point, we would not be able to make out much other than the fact that the character is wearing dark clothing. So the focus here from that extreme long shot is where the character is in terms of the setting. If we then move the camera closer towards the character, and you can see from head to toe, we have a long shot. So again, we're seeing this at the beginning of the sequence or the start of the film to show where the character is in relation to the setting. In this sequence, we will see the character enter a house that does not belong to them. Um, and it's from the start of Cowboys vs. Aliens. And what I'd like you to think is, why does the director use a long shot to show this? Hello? So the long shot there demonstrates the fact that there is nobody within the building, just the main character who's walked in. Now, the long shot also allows us to see the setting so we can pick out the old fashioned objects such as the jug and the bowl used for washing hands and face, and also the mirror on the left hand side of the screen there. Now, the use of the mirror indicates that this character, because we can see their reflection, has two sides to them. And that long shot allows us to see all of this and also the fact it's set in the past and in the Wild West. And here we have the medium shot. Now the medium shot, um, again, is quite often seen in the start of a scene, but here, because the camera is showing from the waist of the character or the middle of a character, the word medium meaning in the middle, uh, to the top of the character's head, then we're gonna see much more expression on the character's faces and also how they're interacting with other people within the shot. Within this clip, the director has chosen to use the medium shot to show how closely the Avengers are working together. So what I would like you to think about is, why has the director chosen a medium shot for this short clip here? And what does it tell us about the Avengers relationship? Are they working closely together or do we think they're um, not working closely together and that they are apart from one another? What's the story upstairs? The power surrounding the cube is impenetrable. Thor's right. we got to deal with these guys. How do we do this? As a team. I have unfinished business. So when the shot ends there, we are seeing Thor and Captain America from the waist up to the top of their head. So we've got a medium shot. And also we can see that there's not much different distance between each of the characters on screen. This would imply and have connotations that the team are now working closely together. If there was lots of gaps between them, then they, they would be representing the fact that they are not working cohesively and together within this sequence. So the medium shot allows us to see the expression on most of the characters' faces, Hawkeye in the background not so much. But we have to think, if this had been a long shot, so we were seeing from the head to toe of the characters, we really wouldn't have seen much expression on any of the characters, even though we could see that they were working closely together. Here we have the close-up. So again, the camera is moving much closer to the point of focus, this time on the actors. And a close-up is going to show the head of a character so that we can really see their um, feelings and their emotional state and what they're thinking from within the shot. Now, it's really important when a director and a casting director are working together, selecting actors, they need somebody who is going to have a, be able to show a range of emotions. Because in a close-up shot, it should be clear to the audience that what they're saying matches the expression on their face. Um, or possibly, actually, they want it to show the opposite so we can see their character's line. So in this clip, there is no dialogue. But what I'd like you to think about is why through these uh, point of view shots, the first one over the shoulder shot close up of looking at the female character, why has the director chosen close ups to show how the two characters feel about one another?
So the close-ups there, um, moving from over-the-shoulder shot from the female character and the male character's point of view, shows they're looking very deeply into one another's eyes, conveying the fact that they're in love. So this close-up shot allows us to see this. Now, there aren't really any connotations that we can describe from it. It's just presenting the information within it. However, if there was um, something to pick out, it would be the fact that the male character breaks eye contact with the female character first to pick up something that is lying on the table so his attention has been drawn towards that. Now, later on in the sequence, you realise that she has provided him with uh, information that he is possibly more interested in the information than her, which we could actually see from the fact that he breaks his gaze first showing that his mind is wandering to the fact that he wants to know what's in the briefcase. Now, sometimes a close-up within the sequence can be of an object. Now, that's going to tell us and show that the object has a lot of importance within the scene or within the film. It could be the item or object that the main character is searching for, or it might be something that has significant information for the audience such as if it was a close-up of a newspaper, then we might be able to pick out the headline and that would give us a catch-up or more information um, to help tell that narrative in the story. Here within it, the director has chosen to focus on a close-up of a black and white photograph. Now, what I'd like you to think about, not just uh, the use of the close-up, uh, think about the music as well. Why has the director chosen to show a close-up of this object and what possibly has happened previously in the film. Okay, so the camera is also zooming in, but we have a close-up there at the end. We would guess, sort of knowing knowledge of film and television and how it works, that the sad music on violins, connotations of sadness, possibly mourning and loss, that somebody in this photograph has died. So it has connotations of a nostalgic, sentimental um, feeling felt by the character and sadness um, that he feels because he has lost one of his best friends. Finally, we have the extreme close-up. Here we are just seeing a section of the character's face and it's a really bizarre, strange looking type of shot. We don't see many of them in film. Now, first of all, these were created, sort of this shot type, around about the 1920s, 1930s, used in gangster films to represent and have connotations of death. So in the 1920s and 1930s, extreme violence wasn't really allowed in Hollywood films. To get round this, to show a character being killed, the director would use an extreme close-up and then a bright flash of light uh, to represent a gun being fired and uh, the muzzle flash from that. So we then have this idea that if we see an extreme close-up, something really dramatic, serious or violent is going to be happening. Um, I suppose the reason why it was chosen was you can really see fear in the expression of the character's face, uh, especially from around the eyes. And sometimes also you would see a reflection of a gun being held uh, towards the character's face. So in this shot from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, it's a really strange one because actually we don't see this before the death of a character. The film opens with this. And this is about one of the few examples I can think of that a film opens with an extreme close-up. Now, knowing that an extreme close-up is something that has connotations of death, really dramatic, serious events happening, why do you think the director has chosen to start it with this? Have a listen to what the main character is saying. These are dark times, there is no denying. Our world has perhaps faced no greater threat than it does today. So the character there talks about dark times and facing threat. So to sort of emphasise this, to really get the audience on board with the fact that this is a film that is going to have connotations of um, sort of uh, death and sort of the end and finality of not just um, some of the characters but also the franchise itself 
it opens with this extreme close-up, so we are expecting to see violence later on and sort of dramatic, tense events happening. 